To build our interactive clickable prototype, we're going to use Marvel App, which is a web app. There's also a companion mobile app that you can use for designing your projects as well. But we're going to focus on the online version. So the first thing you do after you get to the website is you are going to, if it's the first time, go to sign up. If you've already created an account, you're going to sign in. Signed in, you will be presented with the screen to create a project. So the first step that we are going to do is to click on create a project. And we will be creating an interactive mock-up prototype. With this, I will give it a name. And then I will choose the project type, whether it's going to be a mobile type or for a website or TV. In this case, I am designing for a mobile site. Now, one thing to take note of is the pixel dimensions. It's important that we pay attention to these because that is the size that we will need to construct our artwork so that when we bring it in, it works properly. If you're doing website, you'll notice you can choose any resolution. When we're choosing phone, we choose a specific resolution to go along with it. Now, this would be the base size for artwork to fill a screen. It is possible to have a screen that is scrollable, and we will demonstrate that in a little bit. I'm going to work with the iPhone 8 Plus. Now, after I've done that, I will choose Create Project. I'm going to just stop here for a moment, and we'll see that we are able to add in some designs using uh, the Sketch plugin. We can download some sample files, which I've done, and we'll be importing those along with artwork that I've created. And then to do that, we click Add Images. Now, I'll see that I have one project here. We're only allowed to have one active project at any given time. This is a restriction of the free price tier on Marble App. If you wish to have multiple active projects, you will have to pay. But it is possible to archive a project. So you can select a project, click the box, and now we can see that we can archive it and it will add it to our archive folder. So we can then archive a project and then unarchive a project later to gain access to it once more. All right, so now I'm going to go back into this project and see that I can either download the files, which I've already done, and now I have an option to add images. So I will click on Add Images. It gives me an option. I can design with the wireframe tools in Marble. I'm going to instead upload, and we'll see the form that it's giving us, PNGs, JPEGs, and GIFs that we can do. So I recommend using PNGs. And if you set them to the size of the screen, then that works well. Or, and you do have an option to drag and drop if that is how you prefer to interact with your computer. I have an option, the iPhone 6 Plus, these are the files that I downloaded from Marvel that I can include, and these other PNGs are files that I've created. So I'm going to first start with the files I've created, then I'm going to go through and use some of their artwork and show some of the differences that factor into that. So we will import some additional images at a later date. So I'm selecting the files that I wish to bring in, and I will click Choose. And we will see that it now uploads these files into my project. With my artwork in my app, you'll see that these are roughly drawing screens that I am using for my app. The first thing that I want to do is to position what should be the first screen as the first item in the prototype, so that establishes it as the starting screen. Now, I'm going to organize them a little bit in terms of how I'm intending to link them together. So I have my title screen, it goes to my main screen where we can play a new game or resume a game. Then we have settings and credits at the bottom, so settings and credits. The cinematic is where we will go for a new game. And the game map is where we will go for resuming a game. And then we're going to have 
a screen printing counter. Now you see that we could continue this on and on building out all of the major screens for our games. And the advantage of doing this process is we realize some things very quickly as I built these screens uh, and took pictures, sized and cropped them, stuck them onto Marvel app, but when I start linking them together I'm going to find out that I may have missed some of the items that I need. And this is part of the speed of doing it this way, of building out your prototype before spending large amounts of time working on polished or finished artwork. Because ideally what I want to do is to replace the artwork that I have here with much more polished artwork or artwork that would appear to be in-game style graphics. And that's what we will be looking for in your project is for you to take it to that next tier. And when we bring in some of the artwork from the demo pack from Marvel, you'll see how if we use artwork that is indeed polished and finished, we can create a very convincing and engaging prototype for the project. So now that I have some base artwork in place, what I'm going to do is click on one of the items for prototype and now that brings me into the screen and it's telling me as it comes up here click and drag a hotspot so now as I see my artwork I'm going to alright so it's forcing me to draw a hotspot so I'm going to draw a hotspot that covers the majority of the screen because this opening screen when I click on it, I want to then have it travel to this next item. So that's really how we connect things, is we draw the box and then we wire it up or connect it to it. You also notice that not only do I have an option of where it's going to go, I have an option of how it's going to go there or what action is going to drive that. Because the prototypes as we make them can be viewed both on the web and on an actual mobile device. So then we will see that we have actual interactions that we can build into it for testing to make it even more realistic as a prototype. So to go from the first screen to the next screen, I could do some pushes, some slides, pop, flip, or in this case, I think I'm going to select fade as my transition and I will now close that. Now I want to make that box a little bit bigger and I want to zoom out so I can see my screen a little bit easier. So now to move to the next image that I'm adding interactivity to, I click on the arrow there and I will now need four hotspots on this screen. So I'm going to click on New Game and I will draw the active area and New Game is going to bring me to this screen here and with that transition I am going to uh, let's go with this time we'll push left and I close that now I'm going to draw a hotspot on resume game and this time it's going to bring me directly into the active game transition. This time we will push left, close that. So if we look at this hotspot and see this one is, oh that one is push left. So this hotspot I want to, I'll use push right. So I'm just demonstrating something a little bit different. Now if I draw on settings, I will go to my settings screen here, make that active. For settings, I want to slide up as my transition. And then I'm going to close this. And then credits, I will also slide up because that just makes sense. Now something that you'll notice is when I'm on the next page here, the settings page, well I could add in additional screens for these so I could make it clickable. So 
So I did not put a return button. So I'm going to have to construct one. So I will just make the title clickable. That will then bring me back to the main screen. And with that one, we'll choose slide down since we had slide up on the other one. So slide down makes sense. Moving into the next image. Now this is going to be my credits. And as I'm looking at the credits, I need to draw a hotspot to return as well. So I will do that and choose slide down. Close. Moving into my next screen, I'm going to draw a hotspot right here. And for this hotspot, we're going to do something a little bit different. Well, notice instead of going to a screen, what I want in this area is I want to embed. And this is where I can now choose embed or video. I've gone into YouTube and I will see that I have an embed option so I can go and grab my embed code for the video. So I get to that when I'm on a video by clicking on share. So now going back into Marble, now I can paste that in and hit save for that video. Now I'm going to close that and draw a hotspot over play because play is now going to bring me into the game screen. And for that transition, we will go with fade as the option. And moving into the next screen, when we're in the game, I'm going to Actually, we don't want that. I'm going to say I've hit the controls. I've now encountered something and the transition for that. I'm going to go with pop as part of it. So I've done some basic transitions. I've embedded a video. I've put all of that in. Now, if we go back to, this should be back to the beginning. Oh, run our uh, fight here and I'm going to just add one more button here and run will bring me back to that screen and with that we'll use pop as well so there's some consistency. Now we're back at the first screen and what I can do is click on the play button and I'll see there is my prototype can click anywhere on the screen. Now if I click somewhere that is not active, we'll see it flashes the little blue boxes showing me what's there. So now I can click on settings. You can see it's there. Click here, it goes away. Click on credits. Now it appears that credits did not get sized properly because it's sitting smaller in the screen. So I must have made a mistake when I sized that artwork and brought it in. So that's something that we will need to fix because the size is off. Now if I go to new game, we'll see that the animatic video is here. It's embedded into it so I can hit play and watch that or so I can play the video and this is now an animatic that was created using the application storyboarder which is a fantastic storyboarding tool. And now I'm done watching that video and I can hit play. Now I'm in my game, I can, okay, run. All right, now we're back in the game. What I did not do is I did not program any way to save this, to quit or anything else. But you can see that we've been able to build an engaging, clickable, interactive prototype. With the artwork set and our interaction in place for the project. Now if I want to go back and modify any one page, I can click on prototype and work with it that way. When I'm all done, I will be able to click on share. And when I click on share, it gives me 
a URL. This URL I can access on both my phone as well as on a desktop computer to experience how the project will work in an interactive capacity. Now to add to the project I can click under project settings and under project settings I can choose the device. Now we do have an option that if our project is going to be landscape we can change the project so everything is landscape instead of portrait. Portrait is the default. I also now have options as I look through here where we can add or disable certain things. One thing that I may wish to do is to add an app icon. So if I add an app icon to my prototype, I'll click on plus, I can now choose the icon. Icon selected. When people view the app on a mobile device, if they decide to save it to the home screen instead of using the generic Marvel app, it will then use that app icon making it appear to be a native app on their device, which is a pretty cool option that we can add to a project. Project window, if I want to create a new project to work with, what I can do with this is I can click on the box and then have an option to archive it. So when I archive it, it puts it into my archive and now I can see I can now create a new project. If I go to my archive folder, I will see that I have a variety of projects that I have archived at a previous time. So if I wanted to unarchive it, I can unarchive a given project provided I don't have any open projects. Again, this is on the free pricing tier. If you go into a paid tier, then you can have multiple projects. So now if I go back to the projects window and I'm going to choose create prototype. And this is going to use the artwork that comes from Marvel for the project. And I will click on Create Project. And now I've downloaded the sample UI, so I'm going to add images to my project. After clicking on Select, I can go, and now I'm going to choose those images, and I will click on Choose. So there's some differences in this one. Now, as we can see, these are polished artwork. They are not uh, rough pen or pencil sketches. I'm going to go find the first screen that I want to have up. Then the next screen I want will be the empty login, then the filled out login screen. Then we will go to the user screen. And then after that, these next three, it's not too important, the order that we view them. So with my screens ready to go, I'm going to click on Prototype and scale out a little bit so we can see what we're doing. So I'm going to draw a hotspot over Sign In. And when I do that, that's going to bring me to the Welcome Back screen. And with that, if I want, I can choose a transition. So I'm just going to stick with fade for now. And I'm going to move to the next screen. And this time I am going to draw a box so that we click under the username and it goes to this screen here. And with that screen transition, I'll use fade once more, close that, move to our next screen, and this time we will want to draw our hotspot over sign in. When I do that, it brings me to the user account page, and with that, I am going to use push right on it because I can. And if I look at this screen here, we will see that the screen is bigger than the others because it's bigger than a full screen. So if I view this, I'm going to just hit play and let's see what that screen looks like. We'll see I have to scroll to get to this bottom footer. But if I wanted that bottom footer to be a fixed footer, 
what we do is we'll notice here it says fixed footer at the bottom. There's also an option for a fixed header, but we don't have any controls or options that we're working with that really lend themselves to a fixed header in this example. But if I wanted these buttons to always be active, I can now drag that line up, and that means now that is going to be a fixed item. So we're on the profile page, then we have Explore, Trips, and Favorite. So I'm going to draw a button over Explore, and now we'll see there is the Explore, and then there'll be Trips, then it'll be Favorite. So I'll choose Explore, and to get there, we're going to use Slide Up for all of these. Now, we'll go on and do the same thing with Trips. So I'll choose Trips, Slide Up, and then I will go to Favorites, and this will be Slide Up. And we're on Profile, so we don't need to redo that one. When I move to the next screen, you can see we have all of those. So this is, again, one where if I give it a fixed footer, that those buttons will be on screen all the time, and the other content will scroll behind them. So we're on Explore. So now I'm going to draw for my trips, and then we will choose trips on this one, and our transition is going to be slide down. And I will do favorites, slide down, and finally profile. And profile will bring me back to the profile page. And this will be slide down. Actually, I, I want when I'm within any of these three, I've decided I want to transition. I want to go slide left for all of those. It's going back and forth to the profile that it makes sense to slide up and slide down. And we have two more screens to work with. So now again, a fixed footer. And we can see that little circle helps me zoom in so I can line it up, try and get it near pixel perfect with that bottom. So now this will be, well, grabbed it again when I didn't mean to. Draw another hotspot on Explore. So this will be Explore and it will be slide left. Trips, it's going to be slide left. And profile will be transition slide down. And finally, our last one. So now explore, slide left, favorites, transition, slide left, and profile, transition, slide down. So now if we get back to the home screen and start play from that point, We'll see, I can click on sign in, type in the username, it fills it in. So you can see how using the fade works really well for that particular transition. That gives us a good sense of how it would be. Hit sign in, and now it slides over. Now, with this, so you can see how I can scroll, and this bottom taskbar remains. Now if I click on explore, slides up, we can see I have all of that. So that particular graphic, all of these images are set at the same size. They're all the same pixel dimension width, but they're of different height. And that different height allows us to create this interaction where we can scroll behind our toolbar. If I go to Trips, if I go to Favorites, so I might want on some of those so if this goes left, if I go back to explore, maybe I want to have it swipe right instead. But now I go back to profile and it drops down. 
So again, all of these, we can see where we can, we have a little bit of slide or a lot of slide built into it. So it gives us a really nice sense of how this app is going to look. And this has a high degree of polish. And that's what we're going to be looking for in your projects is that high degree of polish to work with it. And then again, go into project settings, add an app icon to complete the process, go under share, and then you will share this URL for the project.